Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to be talking about the toxic effects of commercial sunscreen as well as the toxic effects of natural sunscreen. As someone with a personal history of skin cancer, I'm very particular about what I put on my skin, which is actually why I choose not to use sunscreen. It's well known that commercial sunscreens contain a ton of toxic chemicals, but did you know that even the natural ones are not as healthy as they're advertised to be? Although these natural sunscreens may not contain all the synthetic and toxic chemicals that the commercial sunscreens contain, they do, however, contain inflammatory vegetable oils. And this is a really big problem. As you're going to learn throughout this video, these types of oils actually increase your risk for skin cancer, sun damage, and skin aging. Now, as we're gonna get into in a moment, there's actually well-documented evidence or research that directly correlates a high level of polyunsaturated fatty acids in the diet, specifically linoleic acid, and an increased risk for melanoma or skin cancer. But before we get into that research, I just wanna quickly talk about what's so damaging and so unhealthy about these sorts of oils and what they actually even are. So there's two basic types of fat. There are the saturated fats and the unsaturated. And the basic difference is that the saturated fats have a lot more hydrogen atoms and they are therefore more stable. Whereas the unsaturated fats are missing hydrogen atoms, which make them chemically unstable and more prone to oxidation and going rancid. And a polyunsaturated fatty acid is a very unsaturated fat, which means that it's very volatile and very likely to oxidize and again, go rancid. And as Noel mentioned, a lot of the commercial sunblocks and even the natural ones contain a base of polyunsaturated fats mostly in the form of some sort of vegetable oil. And because their chemical structure is so unstable, just the smallest amount of air even, or light, can cause them to go rancid. So for the most part, these oils, by the time they go into a bottle and hit the shelves, they have already started their oxidation process and are beginning to become rancid. But most people take these oils and they lather them on their skin, and then they go bake in the sun, literally, which is going to obviously cause that oil to become rancid. It's going to increase the oxidation of that oil. And it is the interaction between the UV light from the sun and those polyunsaturated fatty acids that actually contribute to the increased risk of skin cancer, quite literally frying or baking your skin. As a matter of fact, polyunsaturated fatty acids, specifically linoleic acid, have been shown in studies to increase many different types of cancer, including skin cancer. For example, in this study, it was found that patients with melanoma or skin cancer were found to have higher levels of polyunsaturated fatty acids in their tissues. In addition, this study here shows that people that consumed higher amounts of polyunsaturated fats in their diet had a greater risk of skin cancer. Now, for those of you wondering how specifically the polyunsaturated fatty acids cause skin cancer, without going into every detail of the pathology of skin cancer, the basic theory is that oxidative stress in any regard can actually contribute to cancer. And as I mentioned earlier, it is actually the polyunsaturated fatty acids that are what are interacting with the UV light from the sun, again, causing the oxidative stress in the cell. So whether you're consuming polyunsaturated fatty acids or you're applying them to your skin, if your skin cells and the lipid membranes that make up your skin cells are derived of or mostly made up of polyunsaturated fatty acids, they're gonna be very vulnerable and very susceptible to oxidative stress, which is going to increase the risk of them turning into cancerous cells or even tumors. And in addition to directly causing oxidative stress, the polyunsaturated fatty acids can actually scavenge and deplete antioxidants like vitamin E, which would otherwise be protective against oxidative stress. So not only are they contributing to oxidative stress, but they're increasing your risk for further oxidative stress by decreasing your antioxidant capacity. And vitamin E isn't just a potent antioxidant, like other 
fat soluble vitamins. Vitamin E is an anti estrogen and helps to regulate the estrogen in the body, which when elevated is known to contribute to several different types of cancer, including prostate cancer, breast cancer, and skin cancer. So not only are these PUFAs highly estrogenic, but as you learned in this video here, there's also tons of chemicals in these commercial skincare products that are estrogen mimicking. It's not uncommon for commercial sunblock or sunscreen to contain a variety of other estrogen mimicking substances known as xenoestrogens, which usually come in the form of either a paraben or a phthalate. So if you're unfamiliar with these things, definitely be sure to check that video out so you can be on the lookout for these, or as we're about to suggest in a moment, just avoid them altogether and learn how to use very simple, safe, and non-toxic substances that you can probably find in your house right now to protect your skin from UV damage, skin cancer, and prevent and maybe even reverse some skin aging. So you're probably wondering what can you do to protect yourself from sun damage? Well, when it comes to healthy sun exposure, what you want to do is basically get all the benefits from the sun without the harmful effects. And we're going to share with you five ways on how to do that. Tip number one, not too much and not too little. What you want to do is get out into the sun and get that good vitamin D and those benefits without burning. So a good way to do this is start with 10 to 15 minutes. As soon as you feel like you might be burning or too hot, that is your body's way of telling you to get out of the sun. Tip number two, avoid the consumption and application of PUFAs. As you learn throughout this video, eating a diet high in these PUFAs is going to increase your risk for skin cancer. So reducing the consumption and application of these rancid oils is going to help you avoid sun damage, wrinkles, and obviously skin cancer. Instead, focus on consuming and applying more saturated fats like coconut oil, grass-fed tallow, ghee, and grass-fed butter. Because these saturated fats are more stable, they're less likely to oxidize. Tip number three, in addition to reducing your intake of polyunsaturated fatty acids and applying them, it's also going to be beneficial and smart or wise that you do not try to lose weight too rapidly. Now I'm pointing this out for a couple of reasons. First of all, a lot of people tend to approach weight loss with this lose weight fast mentality. You know, it's the more ideal thing for people to try to lose weight fast, but it is the worst thing that you could do in regards to your health. You see, when you lose weight rapidly, you have to go into a metabolic state known as lipolysis. This is the state in which your body liberates fat from storage, which is then later used to create energy, which is burned through the process known as ketosis. The problem is a lot of people today grew up eating a diet rich in polyunsaturated fatty acids, which means that that stored fat is likely highly unsaturated. So when you try to diet rapidly and significantly cut your calories or do anything to stimulate lipolysis or fat burning mode, you're going to be liberating these unsaturated fatty acids where they will start to circulate throughout your bloodstream having toxic effects. In five different ways at least, these circulating free fatty acids can inhibit proper thyroid function, which will depress immunity or have immunosuppressive effects, and of course, increase your risk of skin cancer. So ultimately, yes, you wanna displace the unsaturated fats in your body, but you wanna do it slowly. The slower, the better when it comes to weight loss. This is why you see a lot of people that do lose 20 or 30 pounds really fast, although they maybe look a little better because they lost the weight, you'll notice that they look a lot more aged in their face and in their skin. And this is because, again, the elevation or the liberation of those unsaturated free fatty acids. So instead of trying to lose weight fast, I'm gonna recommend you check out our healthy weight loss course, which will teach you how to lose weight in a healthy, slow fashion that won't stress out your body. Tip number four, use truly safe sunscreen products. So as mentioned throughout this entire video, you wanna avoid those rancid PUFAs and focus on saturated fats if you're getting a sunblock with the base of an oil. In addition, two ingredients that can be very beneficial are salicylic acid and caffeine. Salicylic acid actually helps to block the harmful effects of PUFAs. And topical caffeine in studies has been shown to have a sun blocking effect, reducing the likelihood of sunburns. When I plan to go out in the sun, I actually use our product Mainstay, which contains salicylic acid and caffeine, which are both, like I said, 
proven to protect you from the sun. Tip number five, I would highly suggest looking into or investigating the therapeutic benefits of topical progesterone for a skin protecting effect. So although progesterone is considered the fertility hormone and women do produce a lot more progesterone than men, progesterone still has a basic anti-stress and an anti-toxic effect in men as well. And applied to the skin, its anti-estrogen effect, which is one of its primary effects, is very therapeutic for reducing the risk of skin cancer. Because as you learned in this video, prolonged exposure to high levels of estrogen can induce hypoxia, oxidative stress, and contribute to skin aging, wrinkling, and skin cancer. So progesterone applied to the skin can potentially reduce the toxic effects of estrogen. And again, as you learned, the polyunsaturated fatty acids, one of their major stressful effects is that it can increase the effects or mechanisms of estrogen in the body and in the skin. Now for females watching this, most females can get away with using about 100 milligrams of progesterone in a progesterone cream because a lot of women are deficient in progesterone due to the fact that stress and high cortisol decreases the production of progesterone. Not to mention, so do the estrogens, the xenoestrogens, and the polyunsaturated fatty acids. However, if you are a male watching this, you're not going to want to use more than a couple milligrams of topical progesterone, which would otherwise interfere with testosterone synthesis. But for the general anti-estrogen, anti-stress, and anti-toxic effects, I would highly recommend again using some sort of progesterone cream or something that contains progesterone applied to the skin, especially if you are dealing with skin cancer. However, a safer way to go about doing this, especially for both men and women without interfering too much with your progesterone levels, would be to use a bioidentical pregnenolone, which will have many beneficial effects to the skin, a tightening effect, it'll increase circulation to the skin, but it will also help to increase the synthesis of progesterone in the skin. And this is just one of the many reasons that we feature a pure bioidentical pregnenolone in our product Lush for this very protective effect for the skin and sort of anti-aging effect on the skin. And of course, Lush is comprised of saturated fats and not the polyunsaturates or the unsaturates. It also has additional protective ingredients like caffeine, a carrot seed oil, and a high quality vitamin A in retinol form. Now we didn't touch on this in this video, but vitamin A is actually depleted by chronic sun exposure, which can increase your risk or susceptibility to oxidative stress or UV damage. So replenishing vitamin A levels regularly after sun exposure is a good idea. So we recommend that after you're exposed to the sun, after you've applied that mainstay and you come indoors again, to apply a light amount of the lush to the skin where you got most of your sun exposure, likely on your face. I actually use Lush as a part of my daily skincare routine. And as Nick mentioned, it contains all those really great ingredients that are going to help protect you from the sun. However, that brings today's video to an end. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. For those of you that like to learn more about what we discussed in today's video, we did write a blog post on this subject and you can find links to the studies that we discussed in that blog post, which you can find a link to in the description box below. You can also find links to Lush and Mainstay there as well.